Hello, my name is Kenny, and I'm here to talk about circles. Circles, one of the basic two-dimensional figures we all learned about in elementary school. So simple enough that it would seem pointless to discuss about them. Everybody remembers learning five key facts about circles. Diameter, radius, circumference, area, and chords. These aren't difficult to recall, but unfortunately there is more involved with circles than one would know. And honestly, why would you want to know, since most likely you won't recall it for future reference. But that's besides the point. I'm here to give a not so thorough, and rather short, but hopefully helpful, crash course on the other properties of circles. Disclaimer, while I might be an educated citizen of the United States, what I'm telling you right now will never compare to that of a teacher. So I would advise you to consult your local math teacher and or geometry textbook after listening to this mess. Anyway, let's talk about arcs. Okay, that's an arc, but not the one that I want. Yes, that's much better. Arcs are essentially a section of the circumference of a circle, usually determined by an intercepting angle. There are three types of arcs. Major arc, which has a measurement greater than 180. Minor arc, which has a measurement less than 180. And semicircle, which is exactly 180. No more, no less. So don't argue that it can be a major arc. That will make you sound stupid. I did that once. The measurement of an arc varies according to the intercepting angle, unfortunately. I say that because we all know that in math, you don't always get nice problems or clean problems. Not everything is as simple as the problems from elementary school. Anyway, there are two types of angles found inside circles. Central angles and inscribed angles. Central angles are self-explanatory. Angles from the center point. The relationship with the arc is one-to-one, -one, so the angle measurement equals the arc measurement. Inscribed angles are angles from the circumference of a circle. While it may look difficult and make you wonder, why would you divide your pi like that, the relationship is two-to-one, so the arc measurement equals twice the measurement of the angle. So far so good, right? Right. Let's talk about angles from outside the circle. Okay, it might seem confusing, but let me explain. There are two types of lines that you need to know, tangents and secants. Tangents are lines, rays, or line segments that intersect at only one point of a circle, like a driver facing the side of a large column. Secants are lines, rays, or line segments that intersect through the circle at two points, like a drunk driver driving through a large column. Secants are basically chords and have little importance. Tangents are lines, rays, or line segments that are perpendicular to the radius drawn towards the point of intersection, called the point of tangency. Got it all down? Great. I can't believe you went this far with me. <laughs> Let's refer back to angles and arc measurements related to tangents and secants. Going back to secants, I will confess that I had sinned before you, almighty viewers. I lied. See, secants do form special rules, like its companion tangent, when it comes to angles and arcs. Remember them? Anyway, secants form several relationships, as well as tangents, with angle measurement and arc measurement. When two secants inter intersect inside the circle, the measure of the angle formed is half the sum of the intercepted arc and the opposite arc. When a secant and tangent intersect at a point of tangency, forming a secant-tangent angle, who would have guessed that? The angle form is half of the intercepted arc, so basically, it's an inscribed angle, but not technically one. And finally, when two secants, a secant and a tangent, or two tangents intersect outside a circle, the angle formed is the larger arc minus the smaller arc divided by two. You can use this little formula my geometry teacher used to help you, if needed. Uh, okay, I think I went through everything on this list. What? It was short because it was my first time. Were you expecting a real crash course? <sighs> I would strongly suggest following the disclaimer at the beginning and consult a real teacher in a real textbook because what I've taught you here will never compare to that. I hope I haven't contaminated your mind. Anyway, I'm Kenny, and I'm signing out. Goodbye.